if you have a second, watch this video. This is kind of amazing. Um, this is eyewitness video, not shot by journalists, but by participants and observers uh, in a street war that is being fought by an opposition movement all over the nation of Iran. Uh, I would say that the Iranian protest movement that riveted the world this summer is back, but it's probably more accurate to say that it never went away. It started with that country's disputed presidential election in June. That sparked weeks of protest and months of government crackdowns. This weekend, a religious holiday and a period of mourning for a cleric who died a week ago brought the opposition back out into the streets again in huge numbers, bolder than ever. And as you can see here, to dramatic effect, the government of Iran will not allow journalists to report on what is happening on this, that nation's streets. And so I have to tell you that we cannot independently verify these images. The protesters are, in effect, reporting on them themselves. They're getting word out to the rest of the world over YouTube. And the government's response appears to be its most violent yet. At least eight protesters reportedly killed in clashes with police around the country this weekend. Among the dead is believed to be the nephew of Mir Hussein Mousavi, the man the protesters believe won Iran's presidential election back in June. Hundreds of protesters have been arrested, and just today opposition activists say that authorities have rounded up at least seven prominent opposition leaders. We've seen many videos from Iran since the protests began six months ago. Amateur videos uploaded to YouTube and thus reported out of the country. But the images coming out of Iran this weekend include scenes like this. Uh, what look like members of Iran's militias, the Basij, uh, penned in by an angry crowd and, and reportedly pleading for forgiveness. There's also um, this one, one of a policeman raising his helmet in what looks like a gesture of surrender. Uh, there's also this one of protesters apparently beating a member of the Basij, while others in the crowd reportedly try to protect him, some reportedly shouting, let him go. It's images like these that have caused our next guest to ask if the protesters might not be winning now, if the mullahs might actually fall. Joining us now is Trita Parsi, president of the National Iranian American Council, a contributor to the Daily Beast, and the author of Treacherous Alliance. Trita, thanks very much for being here. It's good to see you again. Thank you for having me, Rachel. So we haven't seen constant large-scale opposition activity since this summer, but it does just seem to persist. It keeps happening. It's not going away. Can you help us understand what this weekend means about the strength of the opposition? Well, uh, Rachel, as you pointed out earlier on, this movement actually never went away. We may have not paid sufficient attention to it, but it's always been there. And uh, their way of protesting and their way of defying the government is not necessarily just by uh, organizing big demonstrations like this. They've been comp uh, continuing to defy the government throughout this period, but precisely when there are holidays like this, when there are sanctioned uh, protests, and when the government itself wants people to go out on the street, that gives them the opportunity to be able to do so in much larger numbers and with a certain level of protection. I mean, the government will have a very hard time telling people not to come out on the most uh, important Shiite holiday of the year. What can you tell us about the strength of the opposition movement, about who in Iran, what sectors of society, what groups of people, even what geographic parts of the country are, 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 are places from which the opposition movement is drawing its support? How strong is the movement? Well, let me put it this way. The fact that six months after the fraudulent election, the protests are continuing and actually in some ways are gaining momentum is an indication that this movement isn't going any, anywhere, uh, it's not going away, it's still there, uh, it's still challenging the government, it's still depriving the go government of any sense of normalcy and in a way by virtue of not having been defeated they have scored a major victory. And as I, as I said, it's impossible to verify the authenticity of these videos that are coming out of Iran. It's also hard to believe that they aren't authentic given the content. Um, I know that you've noticed some differences in the types of scenes that we're getting brought out of the country on these videos posted to YouTube. Some differences in what we're seeing compared to what we saw earlier, uh, for example, o over the summer. What looks different to you? 
A lot looks different, and, and again, you're absolutely right. All we can see is images, but also by talking to people, there's a couple of things that stand out. One is the boldness of the protesters. Uh, if you take a look at these images, you probably notice that unlike this past summer, in which a lot of the protesters were actually covering their faces, now it's actually the security people, the security personnel, that tend to be covering their faces. Uh, the besieged are covering their faces and not the other way around. Furthermore, there's more scenes of people uh, from the security forces surrendering, giving up, uh, turning to the uh, demonstrators, to the protesters. We didn't see that, at least not in these numbers, back in the summer. So the morale of the protesters seems to be quite high, whereas the morale of the security personnel seems to be plummeting. Trader, President Obama uh, today made a statement in support of the protesters. Uh, let's just hear a little snippet of that, and I'd love to get your reaction to it. The United States joins with the international community in strongly condemning the violent and unjust suppression of innocent Iranian citizens. For months, the Iranian people have sought nothing more than to exercise their universal rights. Each time they have done so, they have been met with the iron fist of brutality, even on solemn occasions and holy days. The United States stands with those who seek their universal rights. Do you think that President Obama is hitting uh, the right note there? Is there any risk to him making this sort of statement? There would be a risk if he was too explicit in saying that he's siding with a particular political faction. What he's saying is that, there's, that the United States stands with those who are seeking their universal rights, which is always the case. The United States is on the side of human rights. I think this statement was a positive one. What is needed is to have more frequent uh, occasions in which the president is talking, uh, speaking out in favor of human rights and condemnations of human rights violations. There was a period, particularly during the negotiations between the United States and Iran, in which there was a perceived silence. And that caused a lot of confusion, and a lot of people in the protest movement started to ask themselves if the United States actually is supporting them morally. I think the statement today was positive. It needs to be more frequent. It needs to be a constant part of the vocabulary when we're talking about Iran. Trita Parsi is president of the National Iranian American Council. He's a contributor to the Daily Beast. It's great to have your insight. Thanks a lot, Trita. Thank you so much, Rachel.